Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Appalachian Home Co. and to today's video. I just converted my new Epson 15,000 printer for Eco Solvent Ink. If you don't know what Eco Solvent Ink is, I'm going to show you here in a minute some of the things you can do with Eco Solvent Ink. I also have a video where I converted another Epson 2760 printer for sublimation, and I'll link that video up in the cards above but this is going to be pretty much the same process it's super easy it's just going to use a different type of ink and of course i have the 15,000 epson 15,000 which does print a lot larger than eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 it actually prints 11 by 17 sheets it prints um, sizes up to this so i'm super excited about having this new printer i'm going to show you how i converted it all the inks that i used and once you have it converted, you're going to love it. I have been loving this printer ever since. So let's go ahead and jump on in. We're going to unbox and I'll show you all the things you need to get started. The first thing you want to have for this process is an EcoTank printer. They are formatted to take Eco Solvent ink. That is why I'm using the Epson. I did get the 15,000, but there's a lot of different EcoTank options from $200 all the way up to $700 that you can choose for this process. The $2850 would probably work good if you're looking for a more cheaper option. You're also going to need Eco Solvent ink. I purchased mine from Etsy. This is the Eco Rush brand and I'm loving it so far. You can either get the 100 millimeter bottles like I did and then convert those over into empty bottles to put into your printer but there is another option now that i didn't see when i purchased these you can also get the actual epson eco tank bottles with the ink so that will save you a step if you actually want to get those and they are 70 millimeters but i bought these 100 millimeter bottles before and then i purchased them from this place sublimation plus lv so since I did not get the bottles that would actually fit in my printer, I had to also purchase the universal empty bottles to place the ink into. And I got these from Inkjet Office Supply, also on Etsy. And last, you're gonna need some gloves and some plastic or paper towels to protect everything while you're transferring your ink. So I have already unboxed the printer. I did find the directions and as soon as you unbox your printer, you want to go ahead and remove all the blue packaging tape. So this printer I actually purchased from eBay. It was a little bit cheaper on eBay than Amazon, but you can get these on Amazon still as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the blue tape that you see on the outside of the printer and inside of these little trays. These are cassette trays that actually hold some of the paper. And once you have all of that, you want to go to the back of your printer and remove all of the blue packaging as well. There's also some blue tape and some styrofoam inside your printer, which I'll show you here in a second. You're going to see this little blue tab on the head of the printer. This position, it locks it in and the, if I push it back, that is in the unlocked position. You want it in the unlocked position whenever you're using your printer and you want to pull it forward and lock it in whenever you are moving or transporting your printer. To open the printer, you just simply lift the lid and it locks into place. It has about three different heights that you can lock it into and then you can open up your cartridge area and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to fill the cartridges with Eco Solvent ink. Do not go ahead and put the Epson ink that comes with your printer into these cartridges because that will completely mess this whole process up. But now we're going to go ahead and put in our Eco Solvent ink and I'm going to show you all the inks that I have for this. I'm going to go ahead and take out those empty cartridges so that I can put these into the printer and you can see these lids just fit perfectly down inside of the ink cartridges. The first thing I did was put on gloves. I'm also going to use this Sharpie marker. I'm going to go ahead and label these empty jars so that when I buy more ink, I'm going to be using the same bottles for the same color ink. I don't want to get my inks mixed up, so I'm just going to label all of those. Thank you. 
And now we're going to go ahead and start putting this ink into the jars. I'm going to start with black. These come really well sealed and packaged, so you just want to remove the outer covering. And it also comes with a little pointy tip. I went ahead and opened up the lid because there is a little foil seal on your bottle, so you'll need to go ahead and remove that. Now I tried to use a little pointy tip to pour this into the bottle, but it didn't work, so I left the lid off and just poured this directly into my new blank bottles and that seemed to work the best for me. So I'm gonna go through and just switch all of these out. You also want to remember not to fill these bottles up to the top. Now the black I did because I knew that my printer will hold it because the black has a little bit bigger of a tank than the other colors, but the other colors you definitely wanna leave yourself about an inch at the top because these will completely fill up those ink cartridges in your printer and if you're not careful you will overfill them so there is going to be a little bit of ink left in your colored bottles um, you can just put those back and save those to refill next time and now what i'm going to do is go ahead and just slowly start filling the tanks up i'm going to start with black just pop that top cap off of there and <laughs> this is a good example of why you need to wear gloves with this i, I removed the whole thing instead of just the top i removed the whole lid and it kind of spilled out everywhere so i was glad i was wearing gloves for this black ink but after you get that top cap off you just want to simply um, drop that down right on top of the tank. It, you don't have to push and you definitely don't want to squeeze. You just want to let it flow naturally into the tank and then just pull off the empty bottle when everything is completely done filling. And now you are finished with filling the tanks, you can go ahead and close your lid to the top of your printer because now we are going to plug this up and turn this on. Just hit that power button. It's gonna go through a series of questions, the date and the time and the, I think it even asked you the weather for some reason for on this printer. But after you get all those questions answered, you wanna hit the proceed button and this just says to make sure all of the ink has been added to your printer. Then you will hit done and it'll start to initialize your printer. This does take about 10 minutes, so just walk away. When you come back, then you can go ahead and finish your setup. Now this asked me to adjust my print settings and get my printer aligned, which I did. I went ahead and adjusted my print head. You'll need to install paper. I'm just gonna take out this cassette and put in some eight and a half by 11 paper. If you do not get perfect print results the first time, then you can go through this whole step process to fix that print quality, which is what I did. Follow the instructions on your screen on the printer and that'll help you fix the problem. And then last, you can go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi and register your device through Epson. You also wanna download any updates, and then after that, your printer's gonna be ready to use. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and test this printer out on some projects. I'm using the back tray to put in some special paper. This is actually printable vinyl paper. I'm going to be doing some videos on it later, but I just put that into the back because it is a specialty paper and it's not going to feed well through the cassette. So you can kind of see on this first printout on this glossy paper, I did have some lines that were showing up in my project. I went back and fixed that. 
um, using just a couple different methods. I'll do some videos on that later, but as far as the print quality and the vibrancy of colors, I am super excited about how this came out. These designs did work with my Cricut and Cricut Print Then Cut, so I was able to send those through my machine and cut out some designs to put on these mugs, which are so cute, and I do plan to use some more of these stickers from this printable vinyl to put on some glass tumblers for this summer. I was also able to print out these eco-solvent transfers. These are actually iron-ons, so my next video is probably gonna be how to do these gorgeous transfers. The Eco Solvent Ink is waterproof, so that makes it perfect for any kind of designs you're going to be putting on mugs and t-shirts and things like that. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I can't wait to get on into the next videos to show you how to really use the Eco Solvent Ink. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and you like this content, you can subscribe so you'll be notified of my next video. And I hope to see you guys there.